everyone, it is Danny and welcome to this evening update. I trust and hope that you're doing really fantastic and I'm here with the latest on what is happening across the North Atlantic. So there is Hurricane Nigel, quite prominent up there, and it is sustaining winds of a Cat 1 hurricane. And we've got our other systems to talk about, our marked disturbances, as well as the overall conditions in terms of rainfall activity across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. And so we're drifting to this graphic here from the National Hurricane Center. This is as of the 2 p.m. update and there we can see our two areas with those X's. So the X represent the low pressure areas. We've got that one associated with that tropical wave off the African coast and there's also another in the vicinity of the north of the northwestern Bahamas and to the east of Florida. So that could acquire some subtropical characteristics and as of the latest update there we can see that it is given a 40% chance of development. So that chance has finally increased after being stagnant at 30% for some time. So most models are showing some development of the system and I do think that it is certainly possible that we could see a subtropical storm come from this and the next name to be used for the season is Ophelia so we'll see if it manages to become Ophelia but then we've got that next disturbance out there in the main development region a 70% chance of development this has been stagnant for some time now very low chance of, of seeing something in the next two days so imminent formation is unlikely however as we head into next week and especially headed to the midweek we definitely want to keep an eye on this for potential impacts in the Caribbean and even up to the Bahamas and Turks and Caicos Islands. Not a 100% guarantee, but models were trending toward that westward track. And we're going to look at this system in a lot more detail in a moment. But let's now go ahead and talk about what is happening across the Caribbean and surrounding areas. So we're starting out with parts of the South Caribbean and to Northern South America. And this afternoon, we can see that the daytime heating is certainly inducing some showers and thunderstorms across some areas, parts of Central America, we see Nicaragua, Costa Rica, Panama, even going to spots in Colombia, Venezuela, and the Guyanas as well, especially the northern part of the countries. We can see that there is some activity developing. So hopefully bring in some well-needed showers to some areas to provide some sort of solace from this heat that has been quite uh, unrelenting across the area. So it's been a very hot summer. And uh, by the way, summer is about to close within the coming days and we will officially enter the period or the season rather of autumn in the northern hemisphere. ABC Allen just has predicted this morning remaining pretty dry. We can see that near Trinidad, Tobago, and across some parts of the Lesser Antilles, especially the Windward Islands, there is some activity as expected. So there is quite a bit of moisture in the area. Let's drift further up north. There we can see quite a bit of moisture. So maybe inducing some periods of uh, showers and even thunderstorms as well this afternoon. You can let me know what's happening for your area down in the comments. It gets pretty dry as we head further up north to the, Le uh, the Leeward Islands and even parts of the Virgin Islands. Near St. Croix, there was some thunderstorm activity and we can even see uh, that there is some as well in parts of Puerto Rico. Drifting toward Hispaniola, Jamaica, Cuba, even near the Cayman Islands and the Yucatan, we can see that there's quite a bit of activity developing across some spots. Not everywhere, but some areas are likely experiencing some thunderstorms. Same story as we head into the vicinity of the Bahamas and even Florida, there's some activity coming in from the west. So that is likely to bring about some uh, storm weather as we head to later today across some areas and so again that low pressure area is in the region and now let's go ahead and move on to what is expected so firstly we're going to this surface chart and we can see that we've got those three tropical waves across the region that is the one that we're watching for development these other ones not expected to materialize into anything uh, it's at least not a tropical cyclone so that is not anticipated from these tropical waves it is the most recent one to emerge off Africa uh, that is the one we're watching for development and uh, as I said earlier models were shifting the system more toward the west but as of the latest update the 12z update we're seeing some sort of a change and I mean it is something that is pretty far out so a stronger high would steer the system more to the west and that is when it becomes a problem for the Caribbean and other areas as well but once we have a weakening within that ridge that is when we see more of a probable northwestward track of the system and there were hints of that some models such as Euro now going back to that keeping the system a bit further away from the Caribbean compared to previous updates and other models though want to keep the system heading into the Caribbean or coming very close to the region 
potentially bring in impacts maybe as a strong tropical storm or a hurricane and that is not something impossible because conditions are likely to be conducive ahead of it. Speaking of, as we look at the sea surface temperature map here, we can see 30 degrees Celsius as we head toward the Caribbean and through the Caribbean up to 31 degrees in some spots. So very warm temperatures out there to support development. And uh, the dry air is not very, very plentiful out there. So conditions likely to be conducive and even that shear is not expected to be much of an issue either. So let's see how it develops over the course of the coming days. But as I said, imminent formation is not expected. It's likely as we head to the end of this week and into early next week that we could see a tropical depression, potentially a named storm, come from this. And after the name Ophelia, the next name to be used for the season is the leap. So we'll see if these two disturbances manage to become named systems out there. Now as it relates to what the models have to show, let's go ahead and talk about that quickly. So we're going to be looking at them starting out with the GFS. So as of the latest update 12Z, head into this weekend there we can see it expecting that southeastern US system to be uh, developing. We see that pressure 990 millibars likely a subtropical storm and there we can even see that next system trying to get itself together. Nothing too solid with that as yet. Let's zoom in further into the Caribbean and head to next Wednesday. A week out from now, we can see some moisture increase across the, uh, the northwestern Caribbean as well. And there we can see that system with a pressure of 967 millibars. Definitely a hurricane that GFS is expecting to approach the Caribbean, eventually making its way across parts of the Greater Antilles, heading up to Haiti. And there we can see it weakening. So, I mean, once it's going to be crossing over land, it is going to weaken. Any hurricane that crosses over land will weaken because it is cut off from that source of heat and energy. It's cut off from its fuel and uh, coupled with especially high terrain so that helps to disrupt the circulation of it so that is something that is kind of inevitable should we actually have a system making its way in and moving over a lot of land areas especially something not moving very quickly next as we head to sunday the first of october there we can see the gfs expecting that hey this will be making a curve heading through the bahamas before making its way out to sea euro as of the latest update is keeping the system offshore and also not showing much development of it and i've noticed a slight difference in this shaded area here from the NHC. So there we can see it being pretty broad throughout most of the time frame here. So as we head further out in time, it remains pretty broad. But this morning, it was more suggestive of that track up to the west-northwest and something may, uh, maybe remaining away from the Caribbean. But now we can see that this evening, that area is broadening, which is depicting the uncertainty up ahead. So there is that chance that the system remains offshore and also that chance of it entering the Caribbean. And at this point, we definitely have to continue to keep watch and I will continue to cover this day by day as we approach the end of this week and into next week and even with our future systems as well. I'm always giving updates on what is happening across the tropics and so that is pretty much what I wanted to share with you guys in this update. I hope you found it to be quite informative but if you have any questions as per usual please do leave them in the comments. I'll respond once I get the chance to do so and as always remember to be with the wise.